Hey YouTube, how's it going? Uh, so I know it's been a while since I uploaded, updated a video last, um, and I've had a lot of projects going on, but just nothing that I've had the time to really document on and whatever else. So here's one project that I definitely am going to try to follow through from start to finish, which I know hasn't happened yet, but we're getting there. Uh, so I recently bought a motorcycle, an SV, uh, or Suzuki SV650, if anyone is a SV rider form watcher out there. Uh, but anyways, I love the bike, um, but it's got some aftermarket taillights, which I do like. The casing looks really good, it's really smooth, uh, it's the, the white clear casing. Um, but it, uh, the LEDs on the inside are not very bright. Um, and instead of trying to increase the power of the LEDs, because I don't really know what's in there, uh, I decided just to replace the LEDs with some super flux LEDs that I found from Osmium. Uh, they're a, a lighting supplier. Um, uh, I've worked with them for quite a while, and they have some good products. But anyways, um, and what I wanted to do was I also wanted to hook it up with Arduino and be able to animate the tail lights. So like the blinkers have them be able to scroll off to the side, and I'll show you what I mean. So what I did to do all that um, is I got, uh, I've had my Arduino board that I've got back here. It's just the Mega 80K. Um, I originally was going to try to do some more stuff with my phone uh, to try to, I don't know, take some projects up, but I uh, found out I'm a little bit over my head with that as for my current knowledge range. So I'm probably going to be getting just a little Arduino mini or micro to just throw in there for the bike just to keep uh, and keep everything running. But anyways, so what I got were uh, three of these um, TLC 5940 NT uh, chips from Texas Instruments. What this allows, um, each of these chips have uh, 16 channels of PWM outputs uh, each. So altogether I've got, what, 48 outputs where I can use. Now, it may not look like much, uh, that's because these LEDs are all RGB LEDs, LEDs so they have the, the red, green, and blue lights in each bulb. Uh, but you can see on, on the back side, all the pins going down, each of those pins are a different outlet on, on the back side there. So, um, something to make sure of when you're, if you're going through a project to get some of this hooked up, uh, if you're making this your own, uh, is that the LEDs you use, especially if they're RGB, well, really only if they're RGB, is that they have to be common anode, which means that the single leg that either gets or um, gets power to the positive side or is grounded has to be, um, the one leg has to be the one that gets the power. It has to be common anode. Uh, reason being is because these TLC chips when they they make the connection and control everything through the PMW or the PWM outputs, it goes straight to ground. So your power has to come from back here, flow through whatever devices you're using, de devices you are using. Excuse my tongue, <laughs> uh, and then flow through the chips, which uh, regulate how much power these get and how much flows through, and then it grounds it out. So uh, just something to to make uh, aware of when you're doing that. Uh, the chips um, are easy, quote, very easy to uh, add on to. So these three chips are just kind of daisy chained on. Um, I feel like I saw you can go up to 16 of these chips with no problem. Uh, don't quote me on that because I, I can't remember exactly where I read that or where I'm pulling that out of. Uh, the wiring looks a little messy and jumbly. Uh, that's just because I have just a certain length wire to work with. Uh, once I get these all on a, a perf board or a printed board, I'll, I'll update another video, uh, and that should hope be, hopefully be a lot cleaner. Um, but yeah, uh, the only thing I got besides this hooked up, um, just on this extra little breadboard over here, is just a couple buttons uh, to simulate the stuff on the bike. Uh, got everything, uh, got a few pull down resistors on everything, so. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, the other thing is that when you're when you're powering your LEDs and such, uh, put these on a different power source than from your Arduino board. Uh, a lot of schematics I've seen have pulled it straight from the five volts coming off the Arduino, uh, using the power regulator on there to provide power for this stuff. Uh, I found out that I was very 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 close to the maximum range on the Arduino, which I mean I'm sure the Arduino could take more, but rather than chance it, I. Uh, all I did was I, I got this uh, USB cord running back uh, just to a cell phone charger. You can't really see it back there. Uh, and all I did is I just snipped the end off. Uh, it's 5 volts right in, exactly what everything else uses. Uh, and then you just tie the ground uh, here, the ground from the from your cell phone 
or whatever USB cord you're using, doesn't matter what it is, and just tie the ground in over there because your ground, if you're using the 5 volts on your Arduino to power the chips, um, you'll need to tie that ground in because the ground coming out of here is going back into that side. Uh, if that makes any sort of sense, which it probably doesn't because I'm just mumbling on and on. But anyways, uh, look up uh, Kevin Dara if you're interested in doing these uh, TLC 5940 chips. Uh, he goes very in-depth. He has about an hour-long video, uh, but it's really, really good. Um, he really knows what he's talking about. He actually read it, or wrote his own code, excuse me, um, which does it all in a much more efficient manner, I guess. Um, there is a library out there that you can use to, to plug the the um, the coding in for these TLC, TLC chips uh, into the Arduino IDE. Um, it's a little bit clumsy, but it does work. Uh, enough of me rambling. I'll just show you what it does and get out of your hair. So, uh, left blinker scrolls out to the side. Right blinker scrolls out to the side. No surprise there. <laughs> uh, the brake uh, gives a few pulses, a few strobes. Uh, and then it stays on, and I, I kind of programmed in a, a, like a breathing pattern of sorts. I didn't know what else to call it. Uh, it just kind of slowly fades on and off. I really like the look of the effect. Um, I don't know if I'll actually keep it when I have it on the bike, uh, just because I, I don't know how legal it is. Um, I'll have to look into that, but we'll, we'll see when I get there. Uh, and then I also have, uh, these would be like the hazard lights, so it's hard to see on the, the camera, it probably looks a little flashy, um, but, <laughs> but all it is is uh, it's just the LEDs, um, or orange scrolling off in the center, and then a few strobes of red uh, from the overall uh, fixture or whatever. So anyways, that's all I've got so far. Um, eventually I'm going to take the back end off the bike and get everything uh, into where it should be. Um, and I'll probably do that this weekend. It's supposed to rain a bit, so I won't be taking it out. So at least I can park it in the garage and the neighbors get their toy trains out of there. But anyways, uh, I will keep you updated on this. I promise. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, have a good night and catch you later.